What does it mean to live life to the fullest, train to your potential and perform at your best? Leave nothing on the table. That's a non-negotiable, is that I, I strive to be better every day. Because if I'm not on top of my game, how is anybody else going to follow me down the road? Keep demanding more of yourself to, to live up to that potential and to stay hungry. Training is progress. You know, when I look at the word training, I think of steps, baby steps to get somewhere that you want to be. And that is basically your life journey. It's a mindset in itself, man. It's like, it's not just about, I know that for you, a lot of that's about the physical, but we're constantly in training, whether it's growing our skill sets, whether it's growing our physical bodies, whether it's growing our relationships, whatever. And all of that's a training ground. And that kind of goes back to the mindset that we just talked about. You underestimate yourself and you don't even start. But then once you start, you often surpass what you thought you could do. Perform at your best, mate. That's that's sort of what life is all about. You know, you want to have the knowledge, you want to have the fitness, the health, the ambition and drive that no matter what comes along, when that next phone call comes, I can just say, yes, I don't have to worry. Just go and do it. Yo, what's up, guys? Welcome to this episode of the Live, Train, Perform podcast. I'm your host, Sean Kober. Joining me for my Client Corner series is my man, Damien Gilbert, who is a friend, a colleague, uh, was an intern for me at Tiger Muay Thai and is one of my clients. This is part three of a great conversation that I had with him on the different tools and principles that we've implemented into his life to allow him to be better at life. Let's get this episode underway. It made me realize, like we said earlier, when my father passed, was a man. How fucked up would it have been if I was not ready? I wasn't ready to lose my dad, obviously, but mentally, if I was in a different state, how messed up would that be? And so it gives it gives a whole different perspective on, on, on where your mental health is mm. before you could perform physically. You know, before you can do just the minimal act of mm. being a human. You know, mm. mate. When did we when did we first start working together? It would have been probably eight months ago now. Yep. Mm-hmm. Seven, eight months ago ish. Because I remember yep. well, it was about six months ago that I was driving around Thailand and I had yep. a, I think yeah. I had one or two calls with you whilst I was on that trip. So we were probably like, I don't know, towards, I think we we're maybe towards the end of that program or maybe halfway through or something like that. Um, but let's say, you know, of, let's say that this happened, your father passed, you know, before we started working together. Yeah. Um, how do you think, do you think you would have had the tools to be able to um, deal with it the way that you have and have the outlook and, and be grateful for the time that you did spend together? Or do you think you would have like kind of spiraled out of control and um, lost uh, your way a little bit and, and, and you know, indulged in other things that were going to fill that void? You know what? I think this was a, a strong pillar of why I reacted the way that I reacted. Had I not done this and checked myself before, you know, I would do the occasional podcast or the occasional fucking make me feel good YouTube video. And that's just not real. Um, The reason why I say that before (laughs) people get angry, it's because after that motivation that you get from watching these videos or the self good feel you get after watching this video, discipline kicks in, man. You're not going to feel good all the time. So if I wasn't ready mentally, if I didn't, if I didn't practice what we've been working on, I probably would have gone home, cried a little more, but drink a whole lot more, man. This time when I was at home, yeah, I had a few beers or whatnot, but I wasn't getting shit faced or anything. Um, I would, I would probably go back to good old Damien, destroy the relationship that I had. Um, with everybody, friends, family, most importantly, I wouldn't have been so understanding towards my sisters, man, towards my mom. And that could have caused a whole bunch of problems. Obviously, knowing mm. how mindful I can be and that I was able to take a step back and analyze the situation and give myself time to think. And that, that flight home was horrible. It was 18 hours, man, just thinking. Mm. My father's dead. How am, I gonna act? Mm-hmm. How am I going to act when I see my mom? Mm-hmm. And the mind's a fucking beautiful thing, but it's also the devil. Dude. You can't, your mind can make you, mm-hmm. it can make or break you. And 100%. having these tools and working with them, man, made me, make me, it didn't break me. It made me, 
it, it made me a good pillar. Mm-hmm. I was, like I said, I was still super emotional, man. I miss him every day. Uh, he's my dude. But um, I'm lucky enough that I was able to work through this instead of grabbing a shot after shot after shot. Because all that was going to do is mask the same effects that I had through my PTSD. The same mm-hmm. memories that I had when my friends were dead. Wait, how do I not remember? How do I not cry? Oh, let me drink away and I just go to sleep. Let mm-hmm. me drink away and go fucking meet some random girl and fucking act like the world's okay and we're both fucking destroyed. So, no, this time it was a lot different. This time it was, man, you come first. I come first. Yes, my father just died, but I have to put myself first. I have to support my mom, man. I have to support my sisters. I have to be there because in a way they were there for me too. You know, they were always, Hey, are you sure you're good? Are you sure you're good? You, you know, you're, but it's, yes, I'm good. I'm good because I've been working on myself. I'm not good because uh, uh, of unresolved trauma. I'm good because I've dealt with this and I'm working with someone that's helping me be accountable of my actions. I'm working with someone that's helping me get my sleep pattern in check that, you know, my nutrition's in check. That's telling me, Hey man, it's okay to have a fucking pizza. Hey man, it's okay. So all those things, bro, attached to you and you think that way. You said, man, I'm not a bad fucking person anymore. You know, maybe I was damaged. I was hurt before, but now I got to be the guy my dad raised me to be, you know, he raised me to be he, not to judge people for their religion, for their sexual orientation or any, you fucking respect others because respect's a two way street. Mm. I don't have that guy anymore. So now it's time to put up or shut up. And it, it felt good to keep these things under control, but still be emotional. I was still crying. Um, I was still being you know, human. I was not being this robot from the military. And I was grateful that I was disciplined enough to go t- take my little brown ass on a little run, clear my head, man, remember pops, come back home, see mom. Hey, mom, we got to eat. Hey, mom, you have mm-hmm. to eat. You have to leave the house. Let's go. We'll go for a drive. We'll go. You know what I mean? It helps so much, man, because otherwise mm. I had enough money in the bank where I could have bought a whole bunch of liquor, a uh, whole bunch of pills from the VA. The VA just gives you pills. If I go in there, I'm like, hey, man, I'm depressed, I'm suicidal, whatever, uh, which I'm not. Um, they'll hook you up with a bunch of medicine. I could have mm. I could have taken the easy way out, but my dad will still be gone. My mom will still be grieving and I will still be a fucked up mess. Um, yeah, and you wouldn't be able to support your family in their time of need as well. A hundred percent. We were there for each other in different ways. You know what I mean? I I, I, mm-hmm. I think I say that I was there for them, but they were there for me a lot. You know, mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. just in a different way. I, I had to be. I had to try to fill my dad's shoes, if you will. Um, mm-hmm. But those just can never be filled. So I had, I had I had to be a good son. I had to be a good brother. I had to be a good friend. His friends will write me and that brings up a lot of emotions. So they're like, oh man, we see a lot of your dad in you. I was like, fuck, bro. <laughs> like, bro, damn. that torch has been yeah. passed on to you, man. You're the man of the house now. You have so, that torch, mate. So you, 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 you have his legacy, but you also need to create your own legacy. Exactly, bro. And that's what it comes down to being my own person, being accountable for all the f- bullshit. Uh, seeking for help where I needed help, not just from the VA, not just like from other people, from you, from people that are actually, they have a genuine interest in others' well-beings, you know? Um, and that reflection of who you become, if you listen and if you learn and if you implement this few easy steps, it's hard. It's not easy, man, because we're put on our fucking ways and you can't teach a old dog new tricks or whatever. But if you listen... You feel a whole lot better, man. I still have my days. I still think a bunch of fucked up shit sometimes. Um, but mm. most of the time, man, my, my mind is clear. My thoughts are pure. Uh, I, I still have banter with the boys, you know, the typical fucked up military banter, man, while out there <laughs> chewing tobacco. I miss that shit, bro. And shit. Bro, it's <laughs> great. And, uh, I can go home and I could switch that shit off. And yeah. be there for my family and be there for myself yeah, too, bro. bro. I, I do a lot of shit on my own. That's another thing we've talked about and we've learned is I like being on my own. I'm happy on my own. I could take a mm-hmm. trip by myself. I can get on my motorcycle and just ride, bro. And it's fucking beautiful. Um, That's therapeutic, man. Exactly. 
So it's good to be alone because whenever I do establish a relationship with someone, it's not going to be toxic. We're both going to be, hopefully both of us be healthy individuals where we could tackle shit in a different way. And instead of me projecting my insecurities and my unresolved bullshit on her. So I like it, man. I, uh, I, I recommend it to everybody. Whenever I talk to you, Hey man, if it doesn't have to be this coach, but if you can get someone, it's good. If the person is good at what they do and they're genuine at what they do and you have something similar, it's fucking good, man. Your mind feels, I'm a totally different person. You know what I mean? Like if you fucking met me 2014, 15, 16, 17, 18, you don't fucking know me. Not only that, but I've gone bald. So, <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm pretty sure I met you 2018. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you see me evolve too. You know, you see. I have me how seen you there. evolve. Look at you, mate. You've turned yeah. into a beautiful butterfly. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit! It was. It's crazy, bro. It's crazy. Um, that's awesome, man. What you were just saying there was like such a fucking brilliant passage of one self awareness, but also, um, to like looking at all of these different tools and being able to tweak, refine, adjust them. Um, something I want to talk about now. Uh, I, I apologize as well because I initially said, Hey, let's get on for 30 minutes and talk shit. It already has been uh, like an hour and a half. <laughs> it's all good, bro. I'm in quarantine, so it's, it works out perfect. Yeah, but dude, like it's a, it's a, it's an incredible conversation. I think it's very, um, important to share this with people. And as I said, man, like if the conversation's flowing, we're covering a lot of different topics, then, you know, yeah. we'll keep fucking rolling with it, man. Um, yeah. but what I want to talk about next is, um, exactly what you just said, that growth, that development. You've said, you, you said you've been working with the same therapist for 10 years. Yeah. Talk to me about the changes that they've seen in you in the last yeah. year or so. So Dr. Fernai, it's her last name has probably met four of my ex-girlfriends. And the last therapy session in face or face-to-face that I had with her, I was by myself. Um, and she hit on that. Well, what happened to every time I go with somebody else, I think she wanted to ask, like, who the fuck is this now? Uh, uh-huh. And she asked me, so I told her, I said, like, well, I've never been alone. I have never been alone. One of my really good mates, uh, the guy that lives in Australia, he told me, he goes, you know, you've never been alone, right? You're always surrounded by people. You're always, uh, and and that was one of my insecurities, bro. It's just being alone, man. Not feel, not feeling fucking wanted, not feeling cool, not feeling like people wanted to talk to me. What the fuck is going on? So I will Mm -hmm. go from one relationship to another, um, And my therapist would tell me, you're masking your trauma with other people. You are You're seeking that external validation. Yep. You're not working on yourself. You're not doing that. Talking about what happened that day, it's not going to make you any better if you don't move forward from it. And uh, Mm. I would say, well, what do you mean? I didn't want to go to therapy to begin with because a therapist doesn't know what it's like to shoot somebody. A therapist has never been shot at. That was my thought process, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. of course i was wrong oh, I've, I've dude, wrong. like of, of course man and that's a that's yeah. a big misconception that a lot of people have and that's a, a thought that a lot of people have you know mm-hmm. it's like it's like saying well i'm not going to go and see this oncologist because they've never had cancer mm-hmm. so what the yeah. fuck would they know exactly and um I, I was just you know i was very close-minded in a lot of ways um i was like i said and i would tell her that i said ma'am i'm, I'm so close-minded I'm selfish, you know, um, I think my shit does not stink and I've clearly got does. <laughs> a whole lot. I've, I've got a good job at the moment. You know, I had just got an officer of the month at the police department. So I was a cocky asshole, man. And it just hits you. You're sitting down one day and you break down crying and you have an episode cause you're drunk. And you miss your buddies and somebody else commits suicide and somebody else does this. So I would tell her all these things. And she told me, she said, look, you know what you need to do? You need to replay those conversations that we've had about Gonzo passing and about your other friends, you know, committing suicide. You need to hear yourself. You know, you, you pay attention to what you're saying. And you need to be and alone. how you're saying it. Exactly. And you need to be alone. How you say it, how you think, when you say things are important. And mm. be alone. Don't depend on nobody. The moment you learn how to be by yourself and be happy, 
by yourself and you work on yourself is the moment that somebody else comes into your life, not to give you happiness, but to add on to that bullshit. You know what I mean? Like we're doing this shit together, man. Fuck yeah. You don't complete me. I don't complete you. Fuck no. You're your own woman. I'm my own man. We've both been through the ringer. Life has put us in a way here now. What good was I doing to people around me? Just not girlfriends, but friends in general. If I was always thinking about myself, mm. if I don't always pull out the whole, oh, my friend died card. Oh, my feet. Oh, my feet hurt. Oh, I can't run. I can't walk. My feet hurt. I need to go home. And the police department, I did a few times. Like, hey, my feet are purple. I swap. I will get holes in them. They'll get yellow. I say, I got to go home. Instead of just sucking it up, it's not going to change. I'm always going to be in pain. Um, so the therapist, man, throughout the years, she's told me, she goes, you know what? You look happy, man. And I'm like, what do you mean? She goes, we've been working together. I had a conversation with her on the phone due to COVID. She asked me on the phone. I was like, oh, sort on the phone. Um, she goes, you sound happy, Mr. Gilbert. I'm glad. I told her, I said, well, man, this is going on. This is going on at work. You know, my father was still alive. I have not talked to her since he passed. Um, I was like, I'm in a good mental state. I'm working with a buddy of mine. He's helping with my fitness, my overall health. Uh, it's doing well. I'm back in school. I finished school here in July, which I'm, I hate, but you know, I got, I got to get it done. <laughs> and, um, she's saying, she goes, why do you think that is? So I told her, I was like, Hey, you were right. <laughs> I, I, I was trying to fill up a, a big hole in me that with the company of others that will always make me want to be with them, but not in a healthy way because they're not me. They haven't experienced what I've experienced. So I started working on me, started doing what you told me, started doing what my boy Sean's telling me, started doing all these little things, man, and keeping in touch with people that I want to keep in touch with. So she was so happy, man. She's glad that I've never been medicated on antidepressants. Well, I did once when I got out, but I dropped them. And so she's happy that I take this, the more natural way on things, on recuperating, on talking to people about how my body works, you know, you, a what stretching, what do I do with, because when you do all those things, man, for somebody that's known me when I was 22, when I first got out of the army to now, and for her to tell me in 10 years, this is the first time she notices a change in my voice. She notices a change in how I say things. And what mm -hmm. I tell her, how I tell her, she goes, it's fucking great, man. You are not the only one, but there's people out there that still do this. And so if you fight your, your, your traumas, your inner demons, you know, the, the, the bad thoughts, the alcohol, man, you learn how to live in moderation. You can live a good life. Um, you have to be rich and that helps, you know, talking to someone, therapy helps, man. Um, fitness helps. Um, your mental health, it's like you said, it's the most important thing. You and you see others and you change your view on others. You don't look at other people as weak. You don't look at other people as, mm. oh, you fucking whining bitch. Ah, sometimes I do at work. But <laughs> sometimes <laughs> I deserve it. <laughs> yeah, it's just minimal stuff. But then you also realize, man, maybe this is a traumatic event for this guy. Who knows? You know? Uh, so you learn how to be a little more. Um, fair and neutral to what goes on around you and you put that military mindset aside but you use it to your advantage you're disciplined mm. you seek for help you're humble man that shit humbles you man most people will put put a bunch of veterans that stay in shape and do this in the room and they think there's some arrogant motherfuckers 100 percent, bro mm. because it reflects on their insecurities if you're a secure person and you accept your bad shit and you're working on your mental health and you're working on your fitness if I see somebody else that's fit, that's got proper posture, man, that when he talks, he looks at you in the eyes and he shakes your hand, it's firm. I'm not thinking he's a cocky dude. I'm thinking, man, this motherfucker's a stand-up guy and I'm going to hang around this mm -hmm. bitch. This motherfucker yeah. is yeah. is comfortable in his own skin. He yeah. fucking knows who he is. They, he understands what his values are and he knows the sort of people he wants around him. A hundred percent, bro. Men or women, you know? Yeah. I've met a lot of women that are super, super sure of themselves i have been through a lot of bullshit mm -hmm. man but they're strong fucking women and yeah That's i would rather work out. bro yeah i would rather when if you see somebody like that around you you're like, man yeah that's my fucking woman bro you know like nothing's been given and if it has been given she's earned that shit and she understands mm -hmm. that 
it, it, this is a confidence thing. It's not being arrogant. It's being confident. It's understanding that life can be really shitty, but it can be beautiful. Man. And most of the time, it's fucking beautiful. It puts heaps of people around you that just make you want to be a better version of yourself. You know, you meet that one fucking girl that, damn, girl, you squat more than me. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so it's fucking dope, bro, you know? Yeah, that's sick, man. Um something I want to start winding up the episode with is something that you've mentioned numerous times was the mindfulness and managing your thoughts because Oof, yeah. at the end of the day, man, everyone fucking turns their lights off and they go to bed. And it doesn't matter what you have in your life, material bullshit, doesn't matter how big your fucking house is, how many cars you have, whether you have yeah. a swimming pool, you know, how big your family is, how much money's yeah. in your bank, fucking blah, your portfolio, blah, none of that shit matters. The only thing that you're fucking left with is your own thoughts. Right? Bro. Are those thoughts, are those thoughts serving you or are they sabotaging you? You know, now you've, you've mentioned numerous times that you're not a robot, you're, you know, you go through these emotions and emotions are just that. They're fleeting. They come and go, mm -hmm. right? So the whole idea of mindfulness is being able to take note of these emotions and then let them pass. Don't attach any meaning to different feelings, okay? And then you take that um, pragmatic approach where you go, all right, all of these things came up. I meditated for 10 minutes or whatever. You know, I didn't dwell on anything. All these mm -hmm. thoughts came through my mind. I didn't attach any meaning to them. I let them right. pass. And then you reflect on that. And we'll talk about an AAR in a moment. We reflect on that. And then we decide what we're going to act upon. And we decide right. what we ignore. And, uh, you know, that I think that's really fucking powerful, man. Have you, what's your experience been with that? And how man, has that changed your mindset? Before, uh, before we linked up, uh, I like to think that I have my shit together and my thoughts will come up and they'll come up randomly, right? And man, there were some dark fucking thoughts, bro. <laughs> uh, but I knew how to shut them off. I just go to sleep, dude. You just close mm -hmm. your eyes. Just pop a melatonin or two or three. See what happens. And, and, and hey, man, whatever was available to feel <laughs> good a little bit. And, uh, you know, I started thinking that I will wake up super anxious. I will wake up and the first thing I would do is look at my phone because I didn't want to miss something from someone. Mm. And, or I know that one of my friends committed suicide. That shit sucks, bro. When they call you and say, like, hey, one of the boys, you know, fucked himself. You're like, fuck. Why don't he, why don't he call me? Uh, maybe I was asleep. Let me not sleep. And then you think, man, am I okay? Am I going to one day fucking look at my Glock and say, you know what, bro, join him. You know what I mean? You start, mm. you fuck your mind. Will fuck with you. mm. But your surroundings are important. I believe. And the, the, the pillars that you have of life and, and friendship, friendship, something that we take care of. We don't, we, we take for granted a lot of times, you know, people think you need a friend there. I think, you know, our relationship is dope because when my dad died, we talked about my dad, and then we can still talk about, you know, your dive, your diving, you fucking playing tennis. Never in a million years would I picture you playing tennis. <laughs> um, so it's cool because we're in different countries. You're always traveling. I'm always traveling. Same thing with all of my other friends in Australia and Ecuador and the States. I got one of my real good friends in Texas. I can talk to about these thoughts to certain people. So I began to work with you, man. And I, whenever I go to bed and I'm, I'm having a thought creep up, it's usually on a certain date, right? It's out. Uh, mm -hmm. Man, anniversaries. Right. Anniversaries. These are triggers. And before I would cry, throw a pity party, uh, just blame everybody. Fuck the self sabotage, self destruct. Yep. Whereas, and I see a lot of my friends doing that now, man. A lot of guys that I serve mm -hmm. with do that now. And I see their lives, man. I feel bad. But I can't, I can't intervene in your life if you don't want to help yourself. I'm not, that's not my job, you know? But I see where I've come to at, since seeking for help, since doing this. Things that the government, the, the army gives us, we just don't take advantage of it, man. Because we don't, like we said, we don't want to be seen as weak. So when these thoughts creep in, man, now I'm like, all right, Damien, get your shit together, bro. If I need to, I will stand up, 
walk around a little bit in my room. It's kind of dark, you know. I turn a little diffuser on with all these little fucking essential oils. I don't know what the fuck I'm mixing, but it smells good. And it calms me down. <laughs> it makes you feel good. Yeah. yeah, it calms me down. I, uh, you know, just probably put some white noise and just think, what? why am I thinking this? Is it an anniversary? Mm-hmm. If it's an anniversary, how are his parents, you know, how are Gonzo's parents doing? Am I present in their life? Am I only present in their life when it's their son's anniversary? No. So mm. those things, man, calm me down because in a way I can bring my friend back. But if I'm not taking care of me, I'm, I'm down the drain. There's so many, and not just veterans, bro. I think a lot of people suffer from a lot of mental health. All you got to do now is go on Instagram. And if, if, if you're a guy or girl, whatever, you're going to see somebody with a better body than yours. That could just be enough to fucking get you depressed. And you don't take, you know what I mean? Like you don't take your mental health to that extent. And if you let your mind play that game and play that role, then you're going to believe you're less than that person. You're going to believe you don't deserve to be alive. And you're going to believe that. But who, who am I to judge those people? Right. So when they creep up to me, I'm like, nah, not today, dude. I got so much to live for. I got so much to look forward to, man, that I've done so much work on myself that I would not give in to those memories. I would not give in to those nightmares. I would not give in to those bad thoughts because I have a good fucking life, bro. You know, it's it, where I'm at right now is dope. I have good friends, health, my family, you know, um, even with my dad gone, I'm grateful. You know what I mean? Like, uh, the job that I have. Um, so, yeah, man, when they pop up, um, I look at my life. That's all I do. I say, look at all the work you've done. Look at all you've been through. Look at all the people you got the chance to meet. Everyone, even if it's just for a day, that was a cool fucking person, you know? Mm. Don't give in to that. that t- it's, a, it's a bad moment. It's not a bad life. It's just a bad moment, man. So I put that shit away. I breathe. I, I uh, you know, so sometimes I was so dumb, man. I would start doing push-ups. I'm like, fuck, this is bringing my heart rate up, you idiot. <laughs> Stop. Bro. But then again. He's adding stress I, on top of stress. Exactly, which is why I reached out, man. Because I was like, oh, I think i got to figure it out. I'm fucking pow, 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 pow. <laughs> Damn, now I can't sleep for real. <laughs> so, help, bro. Yeah. I, when I asked that. And so, yeah, when they come up, I'm... I'm Man, like I always say, man, I'm forever grateful, dude, because I can look at things differently, man. I was able to look at things differently. Even when relationships go south now, man. Okay. You were here to teach me something. Hey, I was there to teach you something. Um, And past relationships, (laughs) you know, it made me reflect that it was me. So now I can go on to be a better person. To understand that we all have this shit, but if we don't work on it, man, and it's great that you, you mentioned earlier, you guys are uh, expanding to not just military personnel that you're expanding to. I think everybody should have, you know, be knowledgeable mm-hmm. or cognizant of the Swiss eight thing because usually you seek the coach or, or the program. The program doesn't seek you. So if you have these tools out there for people and you make a known for them, it, man, it's, we all go through a wild roller coaster and, and our mind, if you can, if you can understand how your mind works and if you can understand, you're going to have those bad thoughts, man. You know, there's sometimes that just images pop in my head of fucked up bodies and shit. But then I'm like, Hey, that was 10 years, 11 years ago, bro. Let that shit go. Don't, mm-hmm. don't let that be your present or your future. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yes. It was a part of, it was a part of your history. It is a part of, you know uh, the events that shape the person that you are mm-hmm. but they add to your character they don't define your character yeah and it once you get that under control you realize you're you're just another person here man if you do your part your 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 act of kindness can be onto somebody else and then that person passes it on to somebody else and then fucking it's a beautiful thing man which is why I think mm-hmm. social media, social media is nice. If, if used properly, social media is nice. Um, yeah, it's a tool, bro. Yeah. Mate, something, something you just said then brought up um, uh, something that I heard recently on a podcast or, or read or something like that. Um, but the the guest was saying um, 
you know, the difference between external validation, which you spoke about earlier, where you're filling the void with people, with girls, with alcohol, um, blah, 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 blah. Like if you're externally validated, um, as opposed to internally validated, like internally validated people are those that can go to sleep at night and go, you know, I did the best that I could today and I tick the boxes, um, I tick the wins off the list, mm. I move myself in the right direction, I'm comfortable with who I am, I'm stable with my emotions, um, you know, I can be at my best so that I can help other people be at their best, that's internally validated people, but externally validated people are driven by, um, you know, those external things. So mm. if I meet, if you're externally validated and you meet, you know, 10 people, you see 10 people throughout the day, but they're having a shit day and they don't validate you, they don't compliment you, that now fucks you up and affects your right. day, <laughs> right? So externally yeah. validated people are constantly like, you know, at the whim of everyone else's emotions. Yep. And, and you're right, man. Look at, look at the, look at the fitness industry, right? Um. Look at the, the people that want to influence others, right? Um, you have really good people, but you also have you also have bad people. And mm. uh, like you said, when you were trying to show people the best of you, and you that's who you are. And even hey, when, remember when you would eat a fucking tiger, and sometimes you don't want nobody to fucking sit with you because you want to eat by your goddamn <laughs> self. You want to have your, your me time. Yeah, that's so important, bro. Well, people, go, oh, he's a fucking yeah. asshole. He doesn't want because he doesn't want to eat with you. No, bro. He's you're we're well, as coaches, dude. With Seventy people in a class, sixty people in a class, forty. Then the privates, and then you want time alone. <laughs> you know yeah I mean? dude that's <laughs> mate so, that, that is a great point man like uh, you know people do think i'm an asshole sometimes because you know when i'm when i'm busy at tiger man during high season we got 450 600 people coming through the doors man and you know there's fucking 40 50 60 people in the class man i'm giving my all and i'm i'm at the gym for you know 12 hours man and you know i i give myself like 30 minutes to eat right and then i finish a class people come up to me and they start asking me all these questions, blah, 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 yeah. and I try and point them in the right direction. But now I've got a client in 15 minutes' time, so now I've only got 15 minutes to eat, you know? Yep. Or I do have that 30-minute time, but I've got to eat. I've got to get my get through my emails, get through my social media shit, reply to messages and shit because I do restrict my, my time on my phone throughout the day. And then mm -hmm. someone comes and sits down and I'm like, hey, you know, just give me give me a little bit of time here. I've got I've only got 10 minutes to, yeah. you know, get through this shit before I got to get back to work, man. And, you know, dudes like you fucking get it. But then other people are like, oh, that guy's an asshole because he doesn't want to fucking interact with it. And I was like, hang on a second. Right. I've got shit that I need to do for myself. Yeah. So that I can, can, once I get this shit done, then I can start, um, you know, dedicating time, energy and effort to other people. But I'm one of those people, man, like I need to get my own shit done, squared away first so that I can relax and I can then enjoy being in the company of others. And as you said earlier, man, you know, so many people, they go out for dinner and they're on their fucking phones all the time. May I make it a point that, you know, if I'm going out for dinner, I know that I'm meeting up with people. My phone is not on the table. It's in my little bum bag and it's down yep. on the fucking ground. My phone yep. is never on the table and I like very rarely ever pull it out whilst I'm with other people because right. I want to make sure that the time that I'm dedicating to them is the time that they're fucking getting and I'm not, you know, dispersing my attention between these multiple things. Yeah. Remember this steak quality night? time. Yeah. Remember steak night? Yeah, bro. We were, yep. We, our phones would be fucking out of sight. Move, hey, you know. hey, what night? Steak night, bro. Bro, uh, was it Wednesdays? Wednesday. Yeah, see? <laughs> Mate, I, I, yeah, bro, wait, I get these, I get these random, um, messages from Kat. So for people that have been listening for a while, Kat has been a guest on the podcast a couple of times. I interviewed her and then she's been on as, um, uh, as a guest on the coach's corner. And, uh, I get these random messages from Kat, like on Wednesdays every now and again. It's like Wednesday, yeah. dot, dot, dot. And I just reply, steak yeah. night. <laughs> <laughs> bro I'm, I'm crazy i remember that because we're all like, man what would i get for a good fucking steak and <laughs> none of us will have our phones out we it was so cool man because you enjoy that banter you and and man and you know what a lot i think a lot of people also think oh well, you, you're just trying to live that lifestyle too so, yeah because <laughs> it's fucking good um yeah. Because and as you said, dude, like it changes the dynamic of the conversation. Yeah. 
Dude, a hundred percent. The atmosphere in that uh, for that hour or hour and a half was great, man. Uh, you have, you know, uh, you, Joey, Cat. Uh, we have uh, Joy, myself. Uh, sometimes JR would go, and it was just yeah, conversations. Sammy. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, and it was conver- Yeah, and it was good to know that. Uh, Oh, which is also brought this just reminded me he when i the, the times that i spoke with him and even now sometimes i message this dude he's been such an awesome dude day in day out you know what i mean even when when like shit slow a tiger he was always positive after this covid stuff and stuff like that so yeah when we would all be there talking man like to me i would like to just take it all in it's we're from i'm from ecuador bro <laughs> one of the smallest countries <laughs> in south america and here i was sharing life experiences with you guys and it was fucking cool that's when i started like changing gears in my mind and i was like man this is not all bad bro it's 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 a beautiful fucking thing that you have like-minded people that don't just bitch about their day (laughs) don't don't Mm -hmm. just cry about their significant other don't just blame it all on everybody else we're there enjoying the moment talking about his experiences uh or how what we can do to be better coaches what we can do to uh enjoy our time interacting hey steak night okay hey, on friday we'll bring lunch to coaches development you know what i mean so i think mm-hmm. we take for granted that and most people fall into the system of well i have to work well i can just i can just quit my job and move to thailand like you did i'm not telling you to do that but you can implement little things that will help you not be such a bitter motherfucker all the goddamn time. <laughs> you know, enjoy your life, enjoy your wife, enjoy your husband, enjoy what you have, man. Because I thought I was gonna have my dad for another ten years, bro. And now I think mm-hmm. about it like, oh man, my dad never saw me get married. You know what I mean? Like, fuck. Mm-hmm. So the moment we learn how to enjoy what we have, whether it's a little or a lot, bro, I was so happy with a scooter and an apartment over there. You know what I mean? <laughs> I was like <laughs> fucking chilling, dude. So yeah, it's a it, good lifestyle, man. And, and and again, you know what it all ties down to? People think it all ties down to fitness, to training, to being to your body. Fuck no, man. There's a bunch of really fit people that are really weak mentally. And yeah. being grateful for your for mental sanity, man. It's great. Looking at asking for help, bro. Just and I can't emphasize this so like often or enough because I used to fucking had it. I had it all figured out, you know. I had it all figured out. My trauma was my responsibility, which I still believe. But I, I was a superficial guy. I went in to see my old. This is why I got rid of my old Instagram. I don't know if you noticed. I had the DG neck line. Mm-hmm. Man, I had a good following. I had a bunch of likes, but my, I, I will catch myself posting and then I will just be checking, 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 checking. Oh, mm-hmm. shit. 300 and something likes. Fuck yeah. Oh, 600 likes on a shirtless picture. Oh, okay. Mm. You know? And then it was like, what the fuck are you doing, you idiot? <laughs> none of this matters. Yeah, you catch yourself, man. You yeah, catch none yourself. of that matters. It feels good. It feels good then, especially if you have a bunch of fucking shit that you don't deal with. It feels great, man. You you feel wanting. You feel good. That's that again. Realize. That's that external validation, bro. Exactly. You still fucking you go to you you fucking still turn your light off and crawl into bed at night, and you're left with your own thoughts. And now those thoughts are like, yep. why did that picture only oh. get fucking sixty likes? Right there. You know, like that's the difference, bro. Yeah. And you get that Crazy, mindset, man. man. Part three of this incredible conversation with Damien Gilbert is done and dusted. We have one more installment left. If you've enjoyed this conversation as much as I have, please make sure you share it to your stories. Tag myself and Damien. Uh, Both links will be in the show notes. Uh, If you believe that uh, this conversation can help any of your friends and family, please make sure you pass it off to them. Any five-star ratings and reviews are much appreciated. Much love, guys. Peace.